Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the FPX Nickel YouTube channel. I'm the CEO, Martin Turin. I'm joined today by our VP Projects, Andrew Osterloh. Andrew, uh, thanks for coming on here today. Hi, Martin. Thanks for having me on. Great. Yeah, so we're here to talk about a news release we've put out on September 7th, uh, 2022, describing the results of a scoping study that we've done on the production of nickel sulfate, uh, battery-grade nickel sulfate from our Baptista nickel project in central British Columbia, Canada. Andrew, as we get started here, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about the um, the purpose of the study and uh, at a high level what some of the findings were. Sure thing, Martin. So this is really a, an exciting body of work here that really validates our transition from a project that's you know taking that high value flotation concentrate and, and plugging into the stainless steel market um, and instead taking that high value concentrate and, and directly plugging into the, the electric vehicle battery supply chain. Um, a really exciting piece of work that, you know, uses both test work and some robust engineering studies to, to really validate this change in strategy. And, and really the, you know, the basis and, you know, behind this is, you know, a, a tangible difference in the mineral hour rate that creates a, a shorter and cleaner processing route from uh, concentrate to battery grade nickel sulfate. And really that, that really hinges on the lack of, uh, of sulfur in the, the, the mineral itself. And, and what that does to be able to simplify the process. Um, and, and what that ultimately lets us do is skip that secondary refining stage, which is traditionally required between um, those, those sort of early intermediates and the, the EV nickel refining to produce nickel sulfate itself. Yeah, no, that's great. And it is such a unique advantage we have with, with having this aware white concentrate, um, which in some ways is already akin uh, to an MSP or an MHP type product. You know, one of the things we we refer to in the news release and in the scoping study is the uh, comparability of our concentrate and of the refinery that's been, you know, engineered here uh, to the uh, Terrafame uh, 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 nickel sulfate refinery in Finland. You know, those who are knowledgeable about the nickel market may know quite a lot about it, but I wonder if you can give us a bit of a sense of that Terrafame facility as a bit of a comp here and why we think it's a relevant comparison for, for our, uh, for our uh, facility as well. For sure. And that's that's really the key differentiator for our right as a source of, of nickel in in that in refinery is is that lack of sulfur creates a um, a simpler leaching process, which creates a cleaner PLS, you know, broadly comparable to using MSP to feed the same process. And and again, for those that aren't uh, familiar with Terraforma, as you mentioned, uh, very recently constructed, you know, commissioned in the year 2021, uh, high volume production facility that's that was constructed next to an adjacent mine that was producing MSP, nickel and MSP. Um, so they, you know, use pressure leaching and, and put the nickel into solution and then refine it with a very, very similar flow sheet that's benchmarkable to the Baptiste nickel project. So, you know, really a, a, a great reference for us as we um, move through our test work and, and study pieces. Yeah, great. Thanks for that, Andrew. So again, it really does hinge on sort of the uniquely high value we see in the aware white concentrate that we produce from our mineralization at Baptiste. I wonder if you could maybe walk us through a little bit what kind of concentrate is this um, and what advantages do we see it have, it has rather, in, in respect of sort of downstream refining and some of the temperature and pressure conditions that uh, you would typically see in this type of uh, refinery to produce uh, that battery grade product. Yeah, and again, it, it hinges on that that form of nickel mineralization in the ground, awareoid Ni3Fe. You know, so unlike the the traditional nickel sulfide minerals, awareoid is is approximately seventy five percent nickel and has some very distinct properties that let it lend itself to a very simple and robust flow sheet. So, um, you know, we were able to use sequential stages of grinding and and uh, magnetic separation to produce a a very small volume of magnetics only concentrate. And through a simple flotation process, can produce a very high grade um, uh, aware white concentrate. And now, while that's a great feed to go into the stainless steel market as previously envisioned, there's also the same simple processing advantages for taking that uh, that high grade concentrate and, and putting those nickel units into solution. Um, so uh, I think we've you know we're we're in the process of, of validating and demonstrating the robustness of this mineral processing flow sheet. Recently released phase two. Uh, results from our metallurgical test work campaign, and we're excited to soon release phase three results. Um, but this piece here, what we're talking about today, is really that that next stage, the hydromet piece uh, to process that concentrate. And again, very very uh, you know favorable conditions 
um, for processing a, a wear white. It's readily leachable. And again, that's really due to the absence of sulfur um, under moderate conditions. Um, so I guess, you know, the obvious question is what are moderate conditions? We have, we have two charts on the right of this slide here that show, um, you know, the pressure and the temperature respectively for our wear white concentrate on the far left of each graph. Um, relative to uh, the, the MSP um, leaching that's done at the, the Terra Fame refinery. So you can see it's even less intensive than that. And then uh, compared to two sort of benchmarks that a lot of people uh, are aware of, you know, gold pox circuits or, or laterite h pals. So, you know, very low temperatures, very low pressures. And then that, that clean high grade concentrate um, with a lack of sulfur mineralization results in, in very clean PLS, which reduces the uh, the downstream purification requirements. So, you know, much like that simple mineral processing flow sheet, a relatively simple leaching and purification flow sheet to put the, uh, the nickel units into nickel sulfate. The other advantage of us uh, um, adding this refinery in is we're, we're now newly able to capture the cobalt units that are in our mineralization. So that's a new value stream that we'll be adding to the, the project that wasn't uh, previously envisioned in economics. Yeah, maybe final question for you here. The the idea that um, the Baptiste um, um, aware white concentrate can bypass smelting and go directly to the production of nickel sulfate through this hydromet refinery um, is something that we're seeing some of the other nickel sulfide concentrate focused uh, junior companies also looking at look at. I wonder if you could maybe talk a little bit about that and and the comparison at a high level of what you know treating um, aware white concentrate hydrometallurgically. Uh, looks like and some of the advantages it may have in direct hydromet treatment of nickel sulfide concentrates as a point of comparison. Yeah, it's a, it's a very salient question, and you know, there's there's no doubt that it's that it's uh, that it's uh, not technically feasible. I think the the Long Harbor refinery is a, a shining example that a you know a facility can be built to effectively um, do that conversion. Um, however, it, you know, it comes with additional capital intensity and additional operating costs. Now they're processing a unique sulfide on there, but if you compare it to sort of some of the other ultramafic sulfides out there, you know, the, the key the key comes back to again that lack of sulfur and, and the refractory nature that that sulfur tends to lend to those sulfide minerals. So, you know, where we can get away with um, you know relatively moderate leaching conditions, um, you know, there needs to be a little bit more robustness put into the front end of that flow sheet, you know, whether it be ultrafine grinding or maybe a chlorine pre-leach, uh, chloride addition or ammonia leaches. You know, those types of uh, additional nuances that have to be added into that leaching circuit. And then again, due to the impurities that also come out of it, um, you know, usually a more robust purification process needs to be uh, um, done downstream of leaching there. So again, really tying back to the simplicity and the, the clean nature of that aware weight mineralization. Thanks for that, Andrew. I mean, I think you've done a good job of really highlighting those advantages that the awarewhite concentrate has over the nickel sulfide concentrates and, and laterite ores for this hydromat process. So with that, uh, we invite anyone to uh, please uh, send in questions to us either below this video or email them directly to me at ceo at fpxnickel.com. Uh, until next time, uh, thanks again, Andrew. Thanks, everyone. Cheers.